Hello and welcome to this Kangaroo Math Contest review session. Today we're going to be solving problems related to area, but first let's review a little bit of theory that will be relevant to us. Now first of all we have the notion of congruent triangles. So two triangles are said to be congruent if they have essentially the same side lengths as well as the same interior angles. Next there's the notion of similar triangles. So two triangles are said to be similar if they have the same angles and their lengths are in proportion. So in this diagram here, we have two triangles, a small one called ABC and a large one that's called XYZ. Now what you'll notice is that the triangle XYZ is really just the triangle ABC, but scaled up by some factor. So we notice that the length of the line segment XZ here is just some constant times the length of the line segment AC. And similarly, the length of the line segment XY here is just that same constant times the length of the line segment AB. And finally, the length of the line segment CB times that constant beta will give us, of course, the length of the line segment YZ. So these are two similar triangles and they have a constant of proportionality, which is beta. Now, if beta were equal to one, we would essentially have two copies of the same triangle. And that would be exactly the case when we have two congruent triangles. So now we can talk about the area of similar triangles. So if we have two triangles, ABC and XYZ, and they're similar triangles, and the constant of proportionality between the two is beta, then the area of the triangle XYZ, which we can write as basically XYZ in brackets, this area is beta squared times the area of the smaller triangle, which in this case is ABC. So once again, we see in the diagram, basically this triangle is similar to this smaller triangle with a constant of proportionality beta. And so the area of this larger triangle would be beta squared times the area of the smaller triangle. Next, let's talk about medians of a triangle. So if we pick a vertex of our triangle here and we draw a line segment, which goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposing side, then we have what's called a median of this triangle. So in this diagram, D is the midpoint of the line segment AB. So it means that the point lies on this line segment and it's, actually, it's exactly halfway between A and B. And in this case, CD is a median of the triangle ABC. And notice that we have two other medians of this triangle, namely if we draw a line segment from A to the midpoint of this line segment CB, and also if we draw a line segment from B to the midpoint of the line segment AC. So every triangle actually has three medians. Now, a fact about area in relation to medians is that a median of a triangle actually cuts the triangle into two triangles of equal area. So as you can see in this diagram, we have the large triangle ABC and we drew the median of the triangle, the, the line segment CD. And what this fact tells us is that the two resulting smaller triangles, so namely ADC and BDC, they must have the same area. And of course, this area is going to be one half the area of the original triangle ABC. We're now ready to solve our first question, which is the following. We're told that a triangle is folded along the dashed line to obtain a figure as shown in the picture. So you see we have this triangle and it's folded along this dashed line here, the vertical dashed line. And the result is this figure, which is a polygon with seven sides. Now we're told that the area of the original triangle is 1.5 times greater than the area of the resulting figure. We're also told that the area of the three shaded regions, so these three light gray triangles here, that area is one. And we're asked to find the area of the original triangle. So the first thing we can do is kind of assign variables to certain areas in relation to this problem. 
So you see this dark gray area here, we're going to call capital Y. And this light gray triangle here, we're going to call capital B. Now, if we say that the area of B is lowercase b, and the area of Y is lowercase y, and also notice that we have another copy of Y and another copy of B on the left-hand side of the diagram, because this diagram is essentially mirrored along this vertical dotted line here. So we're given that the area of the dark seven gone, so polygon with seven sides, is y plus one. The reason why we know that is because we just said that the area of this dark polygon here is going to be lowercase y. And we're given from the problem that the area of these three light gray triangles is one. And so the area of this whole polygon has to be y plus one. We can also determine the area of the original triangle in terms of y, because we know that the area of this triangle is essentially, well, y plus y plus one minus b and plus b. Because if you notice, the triangle is made up of essentially b, two copies of y, and the whole light gray shaded region except for this triangle here, which is b. So you see we add b, add y, add y again, and then add one and finally subtract b. And the result is two y plus one. Now we're given that the area of the original triangle is 1.5 times the area of the resulting polygon. So this equation turns out to be two y plus one is equal to 1.5 times y plus one which if we solve for y, we'll get y equals one. Now we said that the area of the original triangle was two y plus one. And since now we know y is equal to one, that means the area of the original triangle is three. And so the answer to our question is b, three. We're now ready for our second question. We're given a triangle, ABC, and we're told that in this diagram, D is the midpoint of the line segment AB, E is the midpoint of DB, and finally F is the midpoint of BC. We're told that the area of the triangle ABC is 96, and we're asked to find the area of the triangle AEF. So how do we proceed? Well, we know that the median of a triangle will cut this triangle into two smaller triangles of equal area. So note that F is the midpoint of CB, and so AF is a median of the triangle ABC. So AF cuts our triangle into two smaller triangles, and these two triangles have to have an area which is one half the area of ABC. So this small triangle here, ABF, has an area which is one half the area of ABC. Now, working with the triangle ABF, we see that D is the midpoint of AB. And so the line segment from F to D is actually a median of the triangle ABF. So DF cuts the triangle ABF into two triangles of equal area, one of these triangles being BDF. So notice that this tells us that the area of BDF is one half the area of ABF, but we know that the area of ABF is one half the area of ABC. So all in all, the area of DBF has to be one quarter the area of ABC. So, so far we know that the area of the triangle ABF is one half the area of ABC and the area of BDF is one quarter the area of ABC. Now notice that once again, EF is a median of the triangle BDF because E is a midpoint of the line segment DB and F is a vertex of BDF. So this is indeed a median. And this tells us that, that we get a smaller triangle BEF, which has to have an area which is one half the area of BDF, 
but the area of BDF is one quarter the area of ABC. So that tells us that the area of BEF is one half times one quarter equals one eighth the area of ABC. So finally, we can determine the area of AEF. It'll simply be the area of ABF, this triangle here. If we subtract from ABF the area of BEF, then we will get the area of AEF. Now, the area of ABF is 1 half times the area of ABC. And the area of BEF, we said, was 1 eighth the area of ABC. So this tells us that the area of the triangle AEF is 3 eighths times the area of the triangle ABC. Now, since we know the area of the triangle ABC is 96, this tells us that the area of AEF is 3 eighths times 96 equals 36. And so the answer to our question is D, 36. We now arrive at our third and final question. We're told that the sides of a triangle ABC are extended in both directions to points P, Q, R, S, T, and U, as in this diagram here. And we're told that the length of the line segment PA is equal to the length of the line segment AB, which is equal to the length of the line segment BS. Similarly, TC is equal to CA, which is equal to AQ. And finally, UC is equal to CB, which is equal to BR. We're asked to find the area of the hexagon PQRSTU. So notice that the triangles APQ, so this triangle here, as well as the triangle BRS and the triangle UTC, each of these three triangles is actually congruent to ABC. Now the reason for this is they share a common angle and two of their sides are of equal length. So this forces the third side to be of equal length as well. So basically in this diagram, we have the triangle ABC and we have essentially three copies of the triangle ABC, which are the triangle APQ, the triangle BRS, and finally the triangle UTC. Now we're told that the area of the triangle ABC is one. So that tells us that also the area of APQ, BRS, and UTC have to be one as well. Now we're simply left to determine the remaining area in this figure. Notice that if we look at the large triangle QRC, it's actually similar to ABC because they share an angle in common, namely the angle QCR is actually equal to the angle ACB. And the length of the side CR is two times the length of the side CB. Similarly, the length of the side CQ is two times the length of CA. So what this tells us is that the triangle QRC is similar to the triangle ABC with constant of proportionality two. So we know that this means that the area of the triangle QRC has to be two squared times the area of ABC, which is just four. Now, similarly, if we look at the triangle UBP, it's also similar to the triangle ABC with the same constant of proportionality two. And also the triangle TAS is once again similar to ABC with constant of proportionality two. So that tells us that the area of the triangle QRC is equal to the area of the triangle UBP, which is again equal to the area of the triangle TAS which is equal to four. So we know that the area of ABC is one and we have three triangles which are congruent to ABC. So they also have area one. And we also know that the area of three large triangles in this diagram are equal to four. So we can essentially combine all of our knowledge to determine the area of the total polygon. So if we add the area of these three small triangles, 
we get 1 plus 1 plus 1. Next, let's add the area of this large triangle plus this large triangle plus this large triangle, which will be 4 plus 4 plus 4. But now the issue is each of these large triangles overlaps with the triangle ABC. So when we add 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is the area of each of these three triangles, we're actually over counting, and so we need to subtract the overlap. So the overlap is going to be 2 times ABC. So what this tells us is that the area of the large polygon has to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 minus 2, which is equal to 13. And so the answer to our problem is D, 13. So that concludes this lesson, and I thank you very much for your attention.